A few weeks ago, we made a video compilation about Jay Carney and all the lies. So I figured, why not hear him from the man himself? This is a video of President Obama's broken promises and lies of the country. Enjoy. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. This is the most transparent administration in history. And we don't like federal agents poking around in our libraries in the red states. We'll close Guantanamo. I am less interested in passing out blame than I am in learning from and correcting these mistakes to make us safer. For ultimately, the buck stops with me. $30,000 for every man, woman, and child. That's irresponsible. It's unpatriotic. The last thing we should do is raise taxes on the middle class. You will not see your taxes increase one single dime. You will not see your taxes increase a single dime. I repeat, not one single dime. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. Uh, and so I respect the right of lawful gun owners to protect their families. I respect that. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. And as for those programs we do need, I'll make them work better and I'll make them cost less. We'll save billions by cutting waste and improving management and strengthening oversight. And I will finally end the abuse of no-bid contracts once and for all. I'm in this race to take, tell the lobbyists in Washington that their days of setting the agenda are over. That's why today I'm pledging to cut the deficit we inherited by half by the end of my first term in office. Guantanamo, that's easy. Close down Guantanamo. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. Do you promise not to use presidential signage to get your way? Yes. This is part of the whole theory of George Bush that he can make laws as he's going along. Uh, I disagree with that. I taught the Constitution for 10 years. I believe in the Constitution and I will obey the Constitution of the United States. We're not going to use signing statements as a way of doing an end run around Congress. Wherever and whenever I can take steps without legislation to expand opportunity for more American families, that's what I'm going to do. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Our next guest is an author, economist. He's been in several of Alex's movies, and he's also a former city councilman of Austin, Texas. It's George Humphrey. How you doing, sir? Hey, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So you, right now, you're traveling kind of back and forth between the mainland here and in Thailand, and yes. you're actually there before the coup d'etat took place. Yeah, I've been watching what's... Uh, it's, it's fun to be able to talk about this because so few people understand what's going on. And clearly, Thailand is a relatively smaller country halfway around the world. But Thailand is the only country in Southeast Asia that has not, never been under imperialistic rule. I mean, it's not ruled by the globalists. Yeah, but it's never, yeah. it was never an like India was c controlled mm -hmm. and China and, and Vietnam and Indonesia. And the, the movie The King and I was all about how, how the Chandra kept the English out. And so the people of Thailand have a real sense of real independence, and mm -hmm. they're very proud of their country. Yeah. They're very proud of it, which is, I think is a great thing. Just like I'm very proud of being here in the United States, of the good parts of it. I've been going there for years and years and years. And the reason I keep going back there is because I love it. You know, the cost of living is about half of what it is here. They've got clean food without any GMOs or very few GMOs. Is that they've got great beaches, they've got great jungles. The people are Buddhist and so they're more chilled out. And it's a fun place and there's a lot of expatriates there who know about Alex Jones and we have these mm. conversations every day. And there's still technology there. It's not like they're, the, oh, the yeah, they're like smart. they're yeah. smart people. Yeah. But w Thailand's gotten a lot of bad press lately, and about 10 years ago, a guy called Toxin became the prime minister. And, what a name. And, huh? Yeah, Toxin. <laughs> and, his, and his big claim to fame was that he's good friends with the Bushes and the Carlisle group. And guess what happened? After, you know, Toxin got in, 
and he started giving all this money to the rice farmer, the poor rice farmers, and of course they're going to take it. So he's basically buying off the votes. Mm -hmm. And as he was buying off the votes, he was robbing the country. And so he, you know, he got caught with his, you know, arm in the cookie jar. They threw him out of the country, but because he had the votes, he got his daughter to run and she became the next prime minister. Her name was Yinluck. You know, she was a real pretty gal, but she didn't know from Shinola. Mm -hmm. And so she was doing the same things, robbing the country. And the people... As she was trained to as do. As she was yeah. trained to yeah. do. Yeah, she's pretty face, though. And anyway, so the, the king, who was a very good guy, you know, he's not perfect, but the king, who is a, you know, he's a good guy, there, was, there are all these demonstrations. There are the yellow shirts who are the, for the more establishment and the king, and then there was the red shirts who were the rice farmers. But the ri red shirts were basically very, very poor people who had been getting these, all these handouts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were like any group of people who were in ignorance and given wrong information. And, and they went back and forth for a couple of years. And it was, it was a little bit pull and tug, but there was not much. I, if, you know, maybe 10 or 15 people in the years got killed. But in the United States, that would have happened every day. The, the people of Thailand are great people. And so finally, the king ordered a coup d'etat, so the army took over, got the old government out, they're settling everything down, and everything is just fine in Thailand right now. The biggest thing in Thailand right now is the devil in the deep blue sea. Mm -hmm. You've got China to the north, who is the, you know, the big golden dragon right. wanting to come down and take over Southeast Asia. And then you've got Uncle Sam in the United States who wants to keep Thailand in, in, as supporters. And, and it's a tough choice for the people of Thailand. And most of the people of Thailand want to stay independent. Mm -hmm. Establish their own destiny. Yes, and essentially, and not be told what to do from you exactly. know what you've had since you know the fifties in Vietnam. You had the yeah. French going in there, and then we took over from them, and it's just been a continuous cycle. Plus, all the other you know countries that are there, uh, Cambodia, um, even parts of uh, you know Hong Kong was colonized. Well, all China. those areas. I mean, I, where I live in Thailand is not that far from a place called Dien Bien Phu, mm -hmm. which was the which was the biggest battle of Southeast Asia between the French and Ho Chi Minh. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, and the French thought that if they went off into this far wilderness and lured Ho Chi Minh in because of their technology, they could defeat Ho Chi Minh. But I'll tell you what, is that the, the numbers and the people of Southeast Asia, they're much stronger than we give them credit for. But anyway, the bottom line is, it's a beautiful place to be, and, and as with most stories in the predominant press, you got to read both sides of it. And a lot of people think things are terrible in Southeast Asia or in Thailand right now, and I would respectfully disagree, is that they have a, a, a good economy, the people work, there's a lot less welfare. They don't... You know, they don't even have 47 million people in their country. We've got 47 million people in our own country on welfare. The people in yeah. Thailand work. Mm -hmm. They have respect for their king, and who, is a, who is a good king. They have respect for what some people call democracy. I, even though I don't believe in democracy, I believe in a constitutional republic. But, you know... Again, the, the main point is, is that we have to, whenever we hear these stories, we need to listen to both sides. Just like in the Ukraine, we need to listen to the Russian side, and we need to listen to the Ukrainian side, and the Western European side. And as you said earlier on, the truth is somewhere right in between. Each side's got elements of the truth in it. Exactly. And, you know, by looking at it, when you don't have a dog in the fight, it's easier to look at it more objectively yes. than other people would. I mean, you live there. And and but you're not necessarily involved in the government. You know? No, so you're, just, you're looking I just at love, it. From, you love the country, as they say, "Pom chop thai mak mak mak," and it says, "I love Thailand very much." Yeah. And so, you know, but we as Americans, we you know, duh, we are fed nonstop, twenty four seven, false information. We it, it, it it's just amazing. 
what lies the predominant media. It is not just ABC, CBS, and NBC. It is 99% of all the channels mm. on, on cable. And I'm a sports fan, and I love sports, but as we all know, sports is the opiate of the masses. Mm -hmm. You know, you get people watching television all weekend long. First, it's the Spurs versus the Heat, and then it's this, and then it's this. And you got this. a golf tournament and tennis, yes. and there's always something you can turn on, and, and I, they like it like and, that. And, you know, and I, I love sports. I, lo I watched Nadal win yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was rooting for him, but I, I realized that they're getting us, and when you watch TV, your energy level goes down. Mm -hmm. It goes down, down, down. It's so much better to be outside working in your garden. Playing sports. Playing sports. Yeah. Getting out there and shooting some hoops, mm -hmm. going swimming, taking a walk, uh, you know, doing what, playing golf, doing whatever, and getting some fresh air. And folks, you know, if you're watching this show, 99% uh, of you are already hip about all this stuff. Yeah. But we can always get hipper, and there's more and more and more information. But as I, I've talked with Alex just recently, the important thing is each one of us, each one of us are an important part of this puzzle, of this matrix. And this is a big matrix. This is a big holograph that we're, we're dealing in. And, and first of all, realizing that we're in this, this illusion, this maya, this, this created reality, and that is a real shocker. That what, when you become aware of that, that's the choice between the blue pill is holding on to the old paradigm, just believing what. The, and, and it's easy to do. It's so easy to believe. And they'll make what it they fun. Want. They make it fun to do that too. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Do you, you keep turning into sports. Keep watching the news. Hey, that's the those, that Starbucks friends. is really tasty. Yeah, exactly. Hey, and you know what? My new SUV. Mm -hmm. I've got all the get Gosmos and, and and I went to the X Games this week. Right. And you know, and I've got you know, and all this stuff. And it's not that we say you don't enjoy this world because I really believe in enjoying this life. And, you know, life, love, and joy. So enjoy the life, but realize is that our slave ma they're not my slave master, but the slave masters, the Illuminati, the plutocracy, the cabal, whatever you want to call this group of people or families that control the economic, political, cultural, and ecclesiastic institutions, mm -hmm. is that they're not on our side. No. Is that... They, they it's like the all, illusion. It's all about power. Yeah. They're, friends, why do you think there are so many vampire movies? Why do you think there are so many vampire movies? Because it's the perfect analogy. The blood is the life force and the chi. Mm -hmm. And these rascals, these rascals, it's for them, it's all about power. And, uh, you know, what we're talking about is relatively a small handful of people, less than 300, and in the inner circle, it's probably less than 15, that make the decisions about which economy is going to prosper, which economy is going to get hit on, who's going you know, to war, who's going to war, mm -hmm. who's going to get the oil, what they're going to say, all of this stuff. And friends... As you know, Rob, and as Alex knows, this thing is so much bigger. It's so much wilder than anybody has any idea about. And as I was, that movie, The Hunger Games, mm -hmm. is so cool. And if you've seen it, they put all these kids in this thing, and they put them under a dome, and they create all these situations. And, it, and our life, in some ways, is like that. And it doesn't appear like there's a dome. It doesn't appear like that. But do you remember that movie called The Matrix? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. do you remember when Neo was talking to the game master and they were in that room with all the TV sets? Mm -hmm. and, and the guy says, you've been here 81 times before. Yeah. And he goes, what? <laughs> he says, and you still haven't figured it out. And so... And it wasn't Neo. It was... The spirit of Neo that had been exactly. there. Exactly. Inhabiting another body and, coming in. And, you know, I know I don't have all the answers, and I could be full of hot air, blown, but I believe this with all my heart. And, and I believe in life is eternal, and I believe that we have lessons to learn, and I think that we as human beings are truly sovereign, and even more importantly, that we have a divine spirit. 
and that our mission, if we choose to accept it, is to become aware of who we really are, mm -hmm. of our connection with our family.